just released its biggest model yet. And this is a really interesting new development because technically, you know, they, they call this open source. Some people argue if this is, you know, actually open source, but we're going to get into all of that in the podcast today. So here's some of the most interesting things I think that are happening here. Uh, you know, we had Mark Zuckerberg go on a bunch of podcasts and it'd be kind of a press tour and he talked a lot about what's going on here. Um, so there's a lot of hype just based off of that. But this is technically their largest model to date. They've released, so it's called Llama 3.1. It's an open source AI model, open source. There's some regulations on it and kind of stipulations, but it has 405 billion parameters, which make it the largest model the Meta has ever deployed. And it's also, um, you know, it's also very powerful and comparable to things from Anthropic and OpenAI and other closed source models. So this is where it's getting very exciting because up until this point, people were kind of giving Meta a pass when they would come up with an AI model. It's like, well, it's not quite as good as, you know, Gemini or ChatGPT or Anthropic's Claude, but like it's open source ish. So like, you know, anyone can use it for free. And so, um, you know, it's like, you know, whatever, if it's not as good, they're, they're kind of being the homie and, and hooking everyone up. Well, it's, things are starting to change because now they're, they're sticking to kind of this open source idea, um, but their models are actually getting comparable. So it's kind of exciting. As far as all the training and infrastructure goes, the model was trained using 16,000 NVIDIA H100 GPUs, right? This is something that only a company like Meta or some of these really big companies really have the budgets to do some of these insane training runs. Um, and it leverages a bunch of different advanced techniques to essentially boost their performance. This essentially is making it competitive with like literally GPT 4.0. So, and also Claude 3.5 Sonnet from Anthropic. So like the big models, right? This is very, very competitive space. So let's talk about the open source and accessibility kind of angle on this. So right now it's available to download um, and it can be used on major cloud platforms. So it's on AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. It also in is integrated into WhatsApp and meta.ai for US users. So meta.ai is kind of where Meta is trying, it's like their chat GPT homepage, right? They want people to go there and like chat with it. Um, so, I mean, it's great. You can go and use it there. And of course, built into WhatsApp. So like, I, I don't know if it's a billion people, but like a ton of people on WhatsApp. So as far as its capabilities and, uh, you know, multiple languages and all this kind of stuff, like what is this thing actually able to do? So right now, um, their new model, it supports a bunch of different tasks. It does coding. It does math problem solving. Um, it can summarize documents in eight different languages. So not as many as other models, but it does English, German, French, Italian, Portuguese, Hindi, Spanish, and Thai. Um, and so what is the data that was actually used? This is something very controversial. People are like, well, these language models are awesome, but they're just stealing everyone's content and blah, blah, blah. There's all these lawsuits and all this drama. And I think more than even like lawsuits, there's kind of like bad will towards some AI companies for the ways that they've handled this. So what is Meta doing? Meta actually used synthetic data, which was generated by other AI models to fine tune Llama 3.1. So even though there was some concerns about potential biases from synthetic data, uh, Meta claims that they balance the training data carefully. Hard to know exactly what that means if they just introduce their own biases and you know, there's all sorts of problems there. But regardless, this is very, very interesting. They fine tuned the model based off of chat GPT's outputs essentially, right? And it's kind of interesting because it's against chat GPT's terms to actually use their outputs to train another model. So I'm not sure where it get the, you know, how this is going to play out and chat GPT could, you know, cry foul and be like, Hey, you used us. And I'm not saying they necessarily use chat GPT. They just said they used other ones. But what's interesting to me is chat GPT is literally doing the same thing with their, um, with their new video model. They're training it off of YouTube and, and, you know, ripping off of there's a big report that came out saying they're just like ripping off of I think like 1600 Marcus Brownlee videos on YouTube were included in there and he was tweeting about it um in the new video model so it's like they're kind of still, everyone's just stealing content from each other so it's like when meta goes and steals it from another AI model which I mean evidently they had to pay for that can API access and pay for that but like but it's against their terms of service well so is everything that OpenAI is doing. So I don't really know who's going to get in trouble here or if anyone is because it seems kind of like the Wild West and everyone's just, you know, going to ask for forgiveness later and just try to get their model built as big and fast as possible. A very interesting time right now. Um, as far as where this goes in the future, Meta currently is working on a multimodal Llama model, which is essentially will be able to recognize images, uh, videos, and generate speech. So they're really going to do everything that OpenAI has done. And they got the budget. They have all of the 
Uh, you know, they got the H100 GPUs from NVIDIA. Like they have the resources to do this. So I don't doubt that they'll have very powerful models. Um, but they said, you know, these are not ready for public release yet. So really this to me is just a testament to how early and advanced OpenAI is. And even some of the other players in the space, like 11 Labs with their speech, like Meta's going to get into it, but they've been doing this for a while and they're really crushing it. So it makes me happy to see that there's a lot of competitors and players in the space. You never want a big monopoly. So I think this is good. And the the focus they're putting on open source, we can argue if it's like 100% open source or not, but the focus they're putting there, um, I think is really great. So it seems to be um, the Meta is putting in a big effort. And I've been giving them credit literally for the last year and a half uh, for kind of what they've been doing in the space, um, because I think it's important and not a lot of people are, are doing it the way that they're doing it. So what about, you know, performance benchmarks? How's this thing actually perform? So it outperforms GPT-40 and a bunch of different benchmarks, including the MMLU and MBPP, um, but it's definitely not as good when it comes to the human eval. So it's, you know, better at some, not better at all, not better um, at GPT-40 at all. But honestly, anything that is beating out GPT-40 on different benchmarks, I think is very impressive. And then when you pair this with the fact that it's open source, this is very, very exciting. And I think we're going to get to a point where uh, this is very powerful in the very near future. I'll keep you up to date on all of that.